Okay, it's morning now, and uh, we are back in the lab. So our casting is cool now. We can take it off with our hands. But uh, before we go on with this, I wanted to uh, do one step behind and uh, get back to the Enterprise and to have just uh, the knowledge of the difference between these two ways of casting. Uh, as you've seen, this ring here versus uh, a free expansion system and uh, how stressful it was for the metal to be melted and uh, pushed, compressed inside the mold. A uh, very stressful way. Uh, we've been very accurate into pouring our investment besides doing a vacuum system with the whip mix. Uh, we went one step further and uh, we even put our, ca our ring inside of a pressure pot. While uh, instead uh, when we're doing framework what I'll rather do is is use this system, which is uh, which works by induction. We have a an induction wire up inside uh, this case, and it's very static. What happens because the metal will be inside this crucible, which is part of our ring. It doesn't move; it just gets melted by the induction. That means there's a friction, an uh, atomic friction of uh, of the materia of the of the metal and it's compressed from the crucible inside the ring and uh, the ring is lifted at it's lifted inside the induction by this platform and it stays in this position until casting has taken place once casting has taken place and metal has cooled the machine automatically relieves the lift and brings out the ring so uh, this was the past, this is the future. We've been using the future oh, for over 10 years now. And uh, we'll take it from here and see what is in our ring. Okay, we are in the, in the area where we open our rings. And uh, what I will be doing at this point is uh, on the back of the casting, easily comes out my casting. We can see that. Here it is. Now, uh, all I will need to do is clean off the excess of my investment, sandblast it, check for bubbles, which I guess there won't be since I use my pressure pot, you can see here the sections of our sprueing channels, the 2.5 and the 3. It looks like a very good casting. And uh, we'll seed it and, and get it ready for delivery. Okay, let me go over this one more time. So uh, once that um, my casting has been disinvested, uh, that means uh, out of the ring, before sandblasting, uh, what I will do is uh, I'll clean off excess uh, of investment just like this. Oh, very well. I can already see that no trouble with bubbles on my first core. You can see that better. Uh, after taking off uh, excess of investment, we can proceed with the cut from the. We will be cutting away 
from the sprueing channels, uh, the post cores. So I'm careful not to uh, not to ruin what is going to be the the surface. There goes one. And there goes two. So we have our abutment. And uh, in my drawer somewhere, here's the other post. So we have one and two posts cut off. And that we will take and, and sandblast now. This abutment can be reused for another casting just for post cores and not for frameworks for PFM. But uh, you'll find a few labs that will use this and use it again on PFMs using a traditional way which is a casting machine broken arm and uh, they will de deliver a lot of trouble with, uh, with that method. method. But anyway, uh, we will go on with our uh, post cores now to the we will go to the sand blaster and and clean them and finish cleaning them from the investment okay here we are on the sand blaster and uh, I have already I have already put my one of my sprues on a hemostat I will be turning on we'll be hearing a little bit of noise because we'll be turning on the the, the dust collector and uh, here we sandblast our first core we are cleaning off all excess of investment stop after um, the cut of the of my post cores off my abutment um, now we can check on how uh, on how it seats at least the one that seats on the model let me see if I can put my camera in the right way We will see how it seats, and uh, this is uh, the moment of the truth. That's how I call it. There we go. That was nice to have it right off the bat, and uh, uh, I will be using now uh, a heatless stone, which is uh, this here, and I will be cleaning off excess of my uh, sprueing channel off and uh, then I will get back to it with uh, with another type of stone and we will see how the surface the outside surface of this core will be uh, will be presented on the final on the final work by the way this is the other post this doesn't need to be seated anything this will be delivered just as it is to the dentist to the clinical to be tested in the mouth if there's any imperfection he will be seating this in the mouth we treat post cores that have to be seated on models